Hello, gore whores and fellow deadites, and welcome to Our Life in Horror. My name is Brendan, a horror addict since birth, and with me always is my horror queen, Sam. Hey guys, we are Our Life in Horror. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and X, and our email is ourlifeinhorror at hotmail.com. We're also on Patreon, where we do after-hour shows. Occasionally, we do bonus episodes. We've got a Discord where we all chat. Uh, shout out to our Patreon members, Sean, Mickey, Bo, AJ, Robin, Kayla. Thank you for subscribing. I messed up our intro. I skipped like half of it. I didn't even realize. I was wondering why that went so quick. I was <laughs> yeah. quickly trying to pull up the fun facts and I was like, oh, he's done already? Yeah. <laughs> I just messed all that up. That's okay. We're, we're a little uh, out of sorts. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. You worked all weekend yep. for Easter long weekend. And uh, I've just been busy with like yard work and yep. yeah, we'll, t- we'll, we'll talk about what we've been up to in the after hours, but yes. Um, yeah, this is why it's coming out a little later today, because I've just been busy. Just been busy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you picked the movie this week. Yeah, I did, because you picked it last week. I know, and you actually enjoyed The Human Centipede. Yeah. We it's... both didn't mind it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and what have we been watching this week? My, you want me to go do mine first, because it's a sad week. Sure. It's a real sad week. Sure. Um, I watched... Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. How was your rewatch? Uh, I gave it a two out oh. of five. Yeah. Um, I don't hate it. It just doesn't give me what I want for a Texas Chainsaw movie. Okay. Um, yeah, like he doesn't even put anyone on a hook. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't give me those vibes. Like I love 2003 and the original and the beginning. Like that's what I want. And this was just, it's a bit of a different setting, and yeah, they but, had some nice cinematography shots. So that's why I gave it a two. Yeah, the wheat fields all looked good. Yeah. The corn fields or yeah. whatever it was. There was definitely some nice shots. And the first time we watched it, we were on mushrooms. Yep. And so watching it this time, I was like, oh yeah, I remember this looking good. But like, story-wise, what didn't love it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't love the characters. Just, yeah, it's meh. Um, so besides that, I've been watching Southern Charm. Yep. I'm addicted. I'm finally, I'm on season eight. I've got one more season after season eight. And then I'm probably going to cry for a bit because I'm going to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to have anything else to watch. I know. I've got other stuff to watch, but like, I just, I've literally been breathing this. Like, I yeah. love it. Um, and then we saw Winnie the Pooh. We did see Winnie the Pooh too. Yes, so go check out our video on YouTube on that. We did a spoiler-free uh, review for it, and then I think at like 4 minutes and 40 seconds, it turns into spoilers, but we'll warn you. Yep. Um, what did I watch this week? I watched Ghostbusters Afterlife for the first time. Right. It's cute. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I like the main little girl, actually. She's got a good like story arc and stuff. Okay. Worth the watch? For sure. Like, I wouldn't expect it. I, would, I wouldn't expect scary no. It to be scary, but it's fun. <laughs> okay. It ends abruptly, too, I found. Okay. Like, I was expecting, like, an epilogue or something like that, but you don't get it. Is that the first one with the kids? <clears throat> yes. Okay, because the one before that was with all the women, right? Yep. Okay. I, I haven't watched the Ghostbuster movie since I was a kid, so I'm not caught up on any of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was all right. I liked it. Paul Rudd was funny, and so was the little girl. She was just, like, pulling out, like crazy like ridiculous jokes all the time okay. a few of them got me okay and then i started watching frankenstein's army yes how was that it was not what i expected so um i fell asleep and i have not returned to it okay um was a little disappointed i wasn't expecting found footage okay and i got found footage and i'm just i don't know i just wasn't I'll, your cup of tea not at, not at the time, anyways. It usually would be, but yeah, just for when I was watching it, I was just had zero interest. Okay. Um, and then I watched uh, the Endless. Right. That was just the other night. Yeah, that was last night. Last night. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, very good, actually. Okay. It tells a good story between two brothers, and a cult, and you follow these guys try to unravel the mystery of this cult, and stuff like that, and it's. Fairly good. Okay. It's pretty tense. It's yeah. funny too. I think it's got some good comedic moments. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend that actually. I really liked it. I didn't know that they were the same directors that did 
So the actors, the two guys in it, are also the directors. Oh, okay. Yeah. What else did they do? They did Spring, which is something I've wanted to see for a while, but just haven't gotten around to. I saw someone post about that not long ago. Yeah, it pops up every now and then. Okay. But, yep, other than that, um, I think that's all I watched. Okay. Um, Skipping physical media, we don't do that anymore? Um, I haven't collected anything anyways. Um, I guess we're going to do some news. News, yeah. I also didn't prepare a game, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's well, Easter weekend, people. I, Happy I, Easter. Yeah, and we didn't even do anything with family or anything. But no. we've just been busy. Yes. Very busy. So I got some news. News. Um, let's see. Gen V and oh. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina actor Chance Pordomo. Yeah. Uh, has passed away due to a motorcycle accident at the age of 27. That was shocking. That was shocking. So sad. He's like a really good actor, and he could have gone so far with it, too. Definitely. Like, he was really rising. Yeah, I, li- I really liked him, and I never watched Chilling Sabrina. I loved him in that. Yeah. He was one of my favorite characters. Uh, I really liked him in Gen V. I thought he was, he thought he was one of the best characters of that show. Oh, just, yeah. It's just complexity-wise. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what else we got here. Lee Wanell's Wolfman that was slated to release in October has been pushed back, unfortunately, and is now slated for a theatrical release January 17th, 2025. Okay. He said that the initial release date was very ambitious. Okay. (laughs) uh, They've since pushed it. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. And it's seeming... More and more likely that Courtney Cox is in the talks to join Nev Campbell in Scream 7. I I, saw that. I mean, oh my god, I'm so surprised. I know, right? (laughs) Wow. Shocked. (laughs) It would have been more surprising if she wasn't in it. Yeah, I know. I I didn't, especially with Nev being back, I didn't see her not coming back. Yeah, no, exactly. The only other thing I keep seeing is like Patrick Dempsey is in the talks to be back. That would intrigue me. I was just after Thanksgiving, I I like him like more. Yeah. Like I liked him before. I watched Grey's until a certain point, till pretty much all the main people were gone. But, yeah. um, but I liked seeing him play something a little different. So I'm like, I would like to see him again. Yeah, he hasn't. I don't. I think that's the only like villain esque role he's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Throw him in some more horror. Yeah. Um. Let's see. The fourth installment of the Fear Street franchise titled Fear Street Prom Queen will be taking place in 1988. I'm excited for this. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. The poster looks cool. I like the first three. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So there's no release date yet announced by Netflix, but... That's based off of a book, right? Yeah, the R.L. Stein books. Okay. So is that the cover that I keep seeing then, or is that the poster? Probably. Okay, the cover. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. Mm-hmm, me too. I got no idea what the story would be, but I'm excited for it. Okay. Uh, let me see. And speaking of Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 3 has officially been announced uh, with bringing in new characters from the beloved child's books. Rabbit and Roo will be set to make their first appearances as well as... What are those things? I, I didn't write them down. The Wong Woozles and... The Heffalumps? The Heffalumps. They're actually going to be in it? They were talking about... The directors said oh. that they were trying to try to get them in there. Oh. Yeah. I thought the person commenting on our thing was just making that up. No, no, no. The director oh. brought it up. Yep. I'm, I'm actually excited. If, you, if you've seen our YouTube review, I loved the second movie. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm shocked to even say out loud. Yeah, I know. Me too. I hope they get... I just hope they keep the... The quality ticks going up here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to see a downscale all of a sudden. Yeah, I know. Let's keep uh, progressing here. Did you watch the intro? Not yet. Oh, okay, because they give some spoilers uh, about what like what happens in Pinocchio and stuff. Do I want to see it? I'm. I think it's. I think it might interest you. Okay. Oh, I just forgot to be honest. Yeah. Can I tell you something about it? Sure. This is like the big thing about Pinocchio. Okay. He's gonna wear the skin of a boy. Ooh. Yeah, so if you want to I get... just got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. That's he, awesome. He wants to be a real boy. Oh so, my yeah. god. Yeah. That's fucking dark. 
Yeah. That's some leather face shit right there. It's supposed to be the darkest one. Oh my god, I just got chills. I'm so excited. And then there's something about Peter Pan and Tinker Bell's pixie dust <gasps> will actually be like heroin. Oh. <laughs> something like that. Oh my god. Okay, we gotta stop talking about it. I'm, I'm like way too excited. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I can't believe I'm having these reactions with these movies now. Yeah. Like, the, I just despise the first one. There's a short clip of uh, Bambi, uh, the Reckoning, on there as well. Yes, I've heard that. And, yeah, it looks pretty Okay, it I'll, looks I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. It, it's short. After it's only this. like six minutes. Um, if you can't breathe, you can't scream. Anaconda is getting... Well, there is a... Anaconda Chinese remake with its trailer already dropped and it looks good. Does it? It looks it. It looks like it's standard sort of remake, but with like just like way better CGI. Okay. Yeah, so I'm very interested to see if they do change any of the story plot B points or anything like that. But I was like, I was all for it by the end of the trailer. Okay. Uh, I was like, fuck yeah, let's I'll go. Have to look that up. Yep. Uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game, will have playable female clowns to spread terror with. Hmm, fun. Yeah, it'll be interesting kind of change up. Mm-hmm. Um, the daughter of David Cronenberg, Caitlin Cronenberg, is having her directorial debut with a horror film satire called Humane. Yes. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually very excited for it. Yeah, I'm sorry. It looks funny. I'm... I'm not, like, pumped, like, stoked about it, but I'm, I'll watch it. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Samara Weaving is reportedly returning for Ready or Not 2. Yeah. And I just saw something else about it. I saw it. that. Oh, I can't remember. They just announced who's directing that, too, and I don't remember who it is now. Uh, Shit. Bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, but how is she going to, what, is she going to play the, I don't know. Is she going to marry another dude with a house as a family? I was kind of thinking the same thing. I'm like, where are they going to go with this? <laughs> yeah. Like, is she just going to pop up, like, in a news report, maybe, as a cameo? Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Um, other than that, though, that's all the news I have. Okay. Um, are we skipping the game? Yeah, I don't have anything. So we get into the movie. You want to have a rock, paper, scissors match? No. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can guess what we're throwing down. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you uh, announce this movie since you picked it. I made Sam watch Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. This is Sam's first time watch. I know. Um, Yeah, it took me a minute. (laughs) took me a long time to watch. I know, I've been trying forever. I know, and I'm going to tell you something in a bit after we get through this intro stuff and we start talking about our spoiler-free thoughts, I'm going to tell you a little something. You've seen it already? Nope. Okay. I'm going to tell you what you could have said to me to make me watch it right then, there, and now. Oh my god. (laughs) I could have watched this how many years ago? Just trust me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Uh, Two scruffy pals backwoods vacation takes a bloody turn when an ignorant college students mistake them for a pair of murderous hillbillies. Release date is September 23rd, 2011. Um, Director is Eli Craig. Budget was five million. I don't see a box office here. Um, IMDb rating is seven point five, and it's got an eighty-five percent of Rotten Tomatoes. Um, this is a big cast, so give me a minute. <laughs> Tyler Labine, Alan Tudyk. I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry, good. Um, Eli Craig. Oh, he's the cameraman. Oh, he's also the director. Sorry, that just threw me off. Mm. <laughs> Katrina Bowden, uh, Chellen Simmons, Jesse Moss, Travis Nelson, Philip Granger, Brandon J. McLaren, um, Alex Arsenault. I'll stop there. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Um, so, spoiler free thoughts. What do you think of this movie? I love this movie. I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's a classic. Yeah. I think uh, it like sets up and then subverts expectations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess if you, like, go in blind, it'd be a lot better. Like, that's why when I was watching, we were watching the trailer, I was trying to get you to shut the trailer off, like, immediately. Mm-hmm. Because after we watched to a certain point, I was like, please, please, God, just shut the trailer off. And I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What are your thoughts? I really liked it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, 
all you had to tell me was that it was a backwoods slasher. <laughs> backwoods is like my favorite setting for a horror. Movie. I showed you the cover. <laughs> the cover has backwoods written all over it. No, I didn't. I didn't ca- gather that from that. I'm sorry. It, I just thought it was gonna the, be. The, it's Tucker and Dale. They're wearing hillbilly stuff. I that didn't cross my mind. Even on the back, there's like did, wood, woods, woods pictures. You don't look hard enough. I, I was just disinterested, maybe, but you just had to tell me it was a backwards slasher. You heard horror comedy and said no. I know, and I gotta stop doing that because I've been enjoying horror comedies lately. Yes, the next one we watch is gonna be Shaun of the Dead. <sighs> that's fine. I think that's one my parents had growing up. Maybe. But yeah. I don't think I watched it. It was either that or this one. They had a horror comedy and they talked about it all the time with their friends, and I don't remember what it was now, but. <sighs> Okay. Okay. We'll get into spoilers. Yep. Which I'm sure everyone's seen this movie, except for me until the other day. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, that's a lie. I got my friend on X to uh, watch it, too, for his first time. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, So, describe this movie in three words. Oh, this is hard. I put down best horror comedy question mark, but now it's like, I don't know. Okay. I'd put this at, like, second best horror comedy. What's your first? Probably Shaun of the Dead. Oh, really? Yeah. I think okay. Shaun, Shaun of the Dead, like, you have to watch it, but it has so many, like, calls back. You know, it uses comedy really well. Okay. And it has top-notch fucking gore. Okay. Like, the best gore scenes out of any horror comedy I've probably ever seen. Okay. Um, I put funny backwards slasher, but I also put best friends forever. Oh, I like that, too. <laughs> Because it is true. Yeah. Uh, who's your favorite character? Dale. Yeah. Dale's just just a sweetheart, lovable Gus. Uh-huh. Like, everybody needs a Dale in their life, and everybody needs to be more like Dale. Uh-huh. He's so wholesome. Yes, absolutely. And he doesn't want to hurt anyone, and you just feel bad for him the whole movie. He is so, he is the lowest self-esteem, and he is just the sweetest man. Yeah. I just yeah, want to he... grab his cheeks and just be like, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, he's my favorite, too. Yeah. Uh, least favorite? Oh, it's fucking Chad. Yeah, like... his name says it all. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Everything about him just screams Chad. I was I was writing notes, and like, I've already seen the movie, so I was writing down some stuff early. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, what's that guy in the polo shirt name again? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's Chad. And then they said his name like five minutes later. I'm like, yep, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> he was in... Uh, Extraterrestrial. Oh, was he? Yep. Okay. He's been in some other uh, horror movies too that we've watched. Okay. Sorry to throw that out there, but yeah, no, he's just okay. a, he's just a top alpha douchebag. Yes, he is, and he's also my least favorite character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like those categories are easy for this movie. Uh, yeah. best acting and worst acting. I didn't put anyone because I thought everyone was fine. Oh, I put uh, Tyler Labine. Labine. For... Best actor. Best, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think he was the best one. Okay. Uh, as for worst, this one was kind of hard, too, because, like, the college students are... Purposely bad. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Chloe, the blonde girl. Yeah, the just one from Final Destination 3. Over the top, just... Yeah. Ditsy, dumb blonde. But that's how she's supposed to be, and yeah. she does it well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's who I had written down, and I was like, nah, yeah, you gotta kind of give it to her for portraying the part well. Yeah, because sometimes that part would annoy me. Yep. But I think she was fine. Like, I thought she did okay. Yeah, I think she did pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I didn't catch anything with the scoring soundtrack. Oh, really? Yeah, um, I, I don't know if that's what I was focusing on. Um, so basically when it's like focusing from the position of Tucker and Dale, it's like twangy, like southern, like banjo country okay. style. And then when it's following, um, the college kids, when the... They're together, it's like partying, and then all of a sudden it turns into like classic slasher vibes. Okay, yeah, just, I can see that. Yeah, it just gives them this like contrasting scores between the two. So when you jump for them, it's like, oh, we're in a slasher, it's scary. And then when it jumps back to Tucker and Dale, it's like happy, happy, and ding, 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 ding. Yeah, okay, okay, maybe I just didn't notice it, but yeah, I, I remember that now. Yeah, that was an awful impression of a banjo, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he tried. <laughs> Um, do you have anything else for scoring soundtrack? No, that's it. Okay. Um, cinematography? I only noticed one really cool shot, and that's, uh, when Chad is telling his backstory, 
and then there's something about a fire or something like that, and the flames like flashbacks comes through his eye. Oh, okay. I just thought that was a really excellent shot. Okay. Um, I didn't really catch any cool shots. I don't think there was one where I don't know if they were in like the the store in the beginning and they moved the bottle and then Dale was his, his face is there. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of fun. Um, but I just in general like the whole backward backwards feeling because it's just one of my favorite settings. Yeah, it is a good set. It feels that way too. I like the forest and the surroundings, and I especially like the little swampy area where they're mm-hmm. fishing. It feels very like hatchety. Yes, exactly. That's what I was thinking of during this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, favorite costumes and outfits? Um, Chad's popped up blue polo shirt or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It just stands out so much compared to everybody else's outfit. I know. I wrote that too. Okay. And then uh, the giver hat. The giver hat? Yeah. Oh, I didn't write that one down. Yeah. I wrote down uh, Dale's bowling shirt at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. It looked nice. It was, I'd actually probably wear it if it didn't have bowling shirt written on it. Yeah. yeah. And I thought Chloe's outfit was cute, obviously. Yep. It's girly. <laughs> uh, memorable lines? I don't have any written. <laughs> Want to go back and forth? Yeah. Okay. Because mine's filled to here. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have, it's the pancakes. You hate pancakes. Oh, it's the pancakes. Mm-hmm. Uh... I guess some of these are just because I just like them. It's like Tucker says to Dale, uh, you're a good looking man, more more or less, and you got a big heart. Yeah. Dale, you got a big heart. I just liked it. It's nice. I like how they bring each other up. Yeah. Um, I have Tucker after the guy jumps in the wood chipper. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I laughed so hard. <laughs> Um, this is Dale. I told you, I told you, Tucker, I'm a zero with the ladies and I'm ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dale. I know. Um, this is when the cop dies. He goes, he looks like he's going to walk it off. He'll be fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, if you have a reoccurring dream about sucking a dick but never do it, does that make you gay? <laughs> I was going to write that too, and I saw you were writing it down, and I'm like, eh, it's too long. I've never <laughs> caught in that line before. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, if you kill my dog, I swear to God, I'll get really mad. Oh, I wrote that one down too. That one's so funny. Hey, we got your friend. I like that one. Sorry, go far. Uh, do some of your friends take medication? Because I think they forgot to take it. <laughs> no, that's a good line, too. I really like that one. Yeah. Um. Let me see. Sick fox. He's making her dig her own grave. Uh, best friends forever. No, that's nice. Um. Yeah, I was beating the crap out of her, Tucker. Because he's talking about the board game, but the kids are listening, and he's like, I fucking killed her, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you want to kill her hillbilly? I'll show you a killer hillbilly. Yeah, I wrote that one down, too. Um, let me see. This is Suicide Park. Quickly hide all the... Sh- um, this is a suicide pack. Quickly hide all your sharp objects. I like that, too. Uh, my last one is Bring It Frat Bitch. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah. Um, let's see. I got a couple more. Uh, oh my god, they cut off his bowling fingers. Yeah. Um, sounds like a good idea. I'll provide the finger foods. <laughs> and I never thought I'd say this, but I'm glad I'm not hung like a bear. <laughs> Did you have any disliked? Nope. Okay, me neither. Um, what's your favorite kill? Oh, I really fucking dig the throwing saw blade to the face in the flashback. Yeah. That kill was just so hard. Mm-hmm. I actually wrote that too, but then I also wrote when Chuck shoots himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just caught me off guard. Are he's trying to shut the safety off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Least favorite kill? I don't have one. Yeah, me either. Core factor and special effects. Uh, one of the things that's just really gross that always stands out is Tucker's bee stings. 
Ew, yeah. They're like just, I don't know if they're over exaggerated or if like, is that what happens? Like they get that fucking big? I don't know. Maybe if you have a reaction to them yeah, or they... if they're on your face. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, that was really gross. I didn't write anything down. I thought it would lo- looked fine. I was not expecting this to be a slasher movie, so I was pleased. Oh, yeah. All the kills are great in this movie. Yeah, like, yeah. The wood chipper's great. You got the kid running through the woods and then he impales himself on the stump. Yeah. Um, I know. I was, I was hoping that you were writing, so I was like, I hope she's seeing this because it's just so funny. Yeah. They're sitting there running in slow motion away from the bees and they just stop and kind of like keep running, but they're looking at each other the same way and then you just fucking boom, like full force right into the stump. Yeah. Oh, I think the special effects in all this movie looks great. His Chad's burn. Mm-hmm. Burned face looks really good. Yeah, it does. Um, Storyline and pacing? Uh, excellent story, but Tucker really gets the shit stick of shit end of the stick this whole movie. Yeah. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and I don't know why. Huh? Like, he gets his fingers cut off. He gets his vacation home burned down. He, the bee stings. The bee stings. Tucker really gets the shit end of the stick. I know, and Dale gets to fall in love. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe... Uh, see, I thought there was a part where, like, Tucker, like, admits that he's never been one with the ladies or something like that in the movie. And that, like, you know, he's like... Yeah, I'm divorced. They're just, the wife left me or something like that. But it, it never comes up. So I don't know where I imagined this all from. Mm. But I definitely imagined all of that. Oh. So that's kind of what I had going on in my head when I watched it. Okay. Just re-watching it. Um, but yeah, it was... Sorry, you go for it. You hit us up with the storyline. Um, I just like the whole concept that they're there for their vacation home. It's so wholesome. And then they just get this shit happening to them for like they just want to go down fucking vacation yeah <laughs> they're just excited to have their and it's a it's a fucking dump but they're so happy about it yeah they're like we never thought we'd have a vacation home and they're just shit happy and it, it's just kind of like it's the little things man <laughs> <laughs> and i love their relationship like they're just like the best of friends and I really liked the twist at the end, the hillbilly twist, where uh, Chad's part hillbilly. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, Jesus, I did not see that coming. Yeah, it just seems like such a ridiculous thing, too, just to throw out there. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, I like the story. Yeah. I love the role reversal here. Yeah. 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 Um, Favorite scenes... I didn't write a crazy amount down just because I think this whole movie is really good, but um, the smile and the laugh, or smile and laugh, I definitely have to put that down, so that's fucking hilarious. That was my first one, too. Yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> second one is, uh, I, I called it Roadhead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he drops his beer. Yeah. <laughs> And then he ends up he ends up with his shirt all the way off by I the know. end of the scene. It's like what happened? I know. <laughs> <laughs> um I like the Tucker and Dale uh drive by too. Like it's just such a small thing, but then like when you when you know the context behind it, it makes it that much funnier. Like because like Dale's just giving like a derpy look almost out the window. He doesn't mean to be menacing, it's just yeah. that's just his face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh I wrote down the campfire story. Yep, yeah, I like that one. Mm-hmm. Um, Tucker and Dale are peeping on Allison, mm-hmm. and Dale's like covering his eyes and don't look, don't look. <laughs> um, I have when they save Allison, and then everyone screams and runs. <laughs> <laughs> we got your friend. <laughs> uh, I put the running through the forest with the chainsaw. Yes. It was very Texas Chainsaw when he's like, does the spin, waving it around. <laughs> yep. I was like, oh, I like that. <laughs> um, I have when Allison and Dale meet because uh, it's just a sweet interaction. Like at first she's like scared, but then she realizes it's fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like that one too. Um, I like the sheriff's death because he actually ends up believing them. Yeah. By the end of it. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, the post comes back, which hadn't come back yet. And sure enough, it comes back and kills the only person that would have believed them. Uh-huh. Oh, excuse me. Um, 
I have when they wrote, write a message in the log and it says, we got your friend. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> I know. It's not meant to be creepy, but it's so creepy. I know. Um, Chad's backstory explained. Mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, I like that. Yep. Um, we talked about that one already earlier. Um, Tucker and Dale explaining themselves to the cop and the kid saying like kids killing themselves all over their property. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have the Tucker and Dale heart to heart. Mm-hmm. I like that. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, almost emotional. Yeah, I think I wrote that down too. Um, the Stockholm syndrome where they're saying that she's got Stockholm syndrome. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck that was funny. Um, and I put the end battle, uh, with Chad and Dale. Okay, Just yeah. Just the whole sequence is really good. Yeah. My last one is Dale and Allison going on a bowling date. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, did you have any of these fair scenes? Oh, God, no. Yeah, me neither. Not in this movie. Um, as for the killer. Chad. Yeah, but also, like, they're all just kind of killing themselves, in a sense. <laughs> yeah, I'd say if you were going to classify one as the killer, it'd be Chad. Yeah. Because Chad is the psychopath of the movie, really. That's true. He's the antagonist. He's the instigator. He's the one trying to mob mentality these kids into going and attack these poor uh, Tucker and Dale, who have nothing or want to do with these kids. Mm-hmm. Like, if anything, they just want to be friends so they can go party and drink beer with them, right? Yeah. Uh, Chad just totally s- swips everybody over in it. Um, and he says he says a line, too, that I actually forgot to say. It's uh, something about survival of the fittest. It, or it's, this is what it's all about. It's us versus them, survival of the fittest. So it's like... He's he's been thinking about this moment his entire life. Mm-hmm. He's been like preparing for this. He like any 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 anything. If they would have stole his beer, like he would have been like down to try to kill those hillbillies. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that's fair. I didn't write anything for the killer because I wasn't really sure what to write. Oh, yeah. um, but no, that's a fair point. Yeah, until he finds out he's half hillbilly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, scary rating, rewatchability, and would you recommend? Uh, zero on the scary rating. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's not scary, but it's funny. It's good gore, I guess, if you... A little squeamish around that. Um, rewatchability is a big yes, and I highly recommend this movie. Yep, I'm in the same boat for all three. Okay. Uh, final movie rating as a whole, we rate our movies with emojis. Uh, one out of five is the poop emoji, then we have an eye roll emoji, an okay emoji, a thumbs up emoji, and a 100 emoji. If you're somewhere in between, you can say a high thumbs up or a low thumbs up. What would you rate this movie? I... It's so borderline. So borderline between two things. Okay. I'm gonna give it a... Fuck. I'm gonna give it a low 100. Okay. It's just... It's a very, very, very well done horror comedy. Mm-hmm. But it's not quite perfect horror comedy. Okay. Oh, that's so close. It's so close in my mind. <laughs> it's like, there's only like three horror comedies that I really fucking love. That are like top tier. Yeah. And this this is probably number two. Okay. Oh, I can't stop yawning. I'm sorry. Um, I am also giving it a low 100. It was almost the 100. It just felt, when we paused it and there was half hour left, I thought we were almost done. Okay. So it felt slightly long. Not in a way where it was like dragging like crazy, but when we hit the hour mark and we paused it to go, I don't know, we got snacks or something, chips. Yeah. Um, I, I was just kind of surprised that there was still half hour left. Okay. But besides that, I really liked it. Hmm. I actually didn't have a problem with any of the pacing at all throughout this movie. No. Yeah. You've seen it before, too. Yes. This is probably my third watch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll get into fun facts. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, special feature on the DVD plays the movie from the college kid's perspective in which Tucker and Dale are murderous villains. Have you watched that? No, but I thought about it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, the film was shelved for over three years before it was finally released. Oh, what a mistake that was. Mm-hmm. Um, Alan Tudyuk uh, came up with the idea to pour beer on his face to treat Tucker's bee stings. <laughs> nice. Uh, Tyler Labine chose the giver hat to wear as Dale for two reasons. First, it looks like the word giver, alluding to his kind and generous nature. Second, it is the Canadian equivalent of gitter, gitter done, <laughs> the redneck phrase. <laughs> <laughs> huh. um, Tyler Labine ad-libbed the line, they hate my face. Um... Unlike most movies where a nail gun is used as a weapon, Dale's is actually hooked up to an air compressor. Dale can also be seen holding down the safety tip on the front of the gun with his fingers. Without both of those actions, the nail gun would not fire. Ah, I never noticed that. Mm -hmm. They could have a battery-powered nail gun. Yeah. Those are things. Uh, towards the end of the movie, when Tucker and Dale are reminiscing about catching frogs at the creek, Dale mentions that he used to lick them. Tyler Labine actually did lick a toad in a small role he had on Quagmire 1996, 14 years prior. Oh. Hmm. Um, the line, I'm going to shove my boot down his fucking throat, is the first and only time you hear Dale swear in the whole movie. <laughs> oh, I didn't know so that. so nice. Oh. <laughs> Uh, the opening scenes on the road were shot during a thunderstorm. Really? Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. A rough cut of the film was leaked, which revealed various moments when lines were dubbed and when post-production effects are used. When Chuck runs off to get the sheriff, he clearly trips in the background, but the scene cuts before he hits the ground. Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> I oh. want to see that now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when Dale and Tucker save Allison from drowning, they shout out, Hey, lady, a nod to Jerry Lewis. Yeah, I, don't, I also don't know. <laughs> uh, Jesse Moss and Shailen Simmons both appeared in Final Destination 3. They were... Who's Jesse Moss? Oh, he plays Chad. Huh. Yeah, I guess he is. Who does he play? I don't know. Fuck, now I recognize his dumb face in there, but I don't know. Is he the one that works in the hardware store with that girl? No, that dude's... Yeah, no, it's not him. No, I, I, it's been a minute since we watched them. He must have kept... He must not have gone off the road. Or was he one of... He might have been, like, the boyfriend or something? Like, he probably died. I can't oh, remember. Oh, maybe. I think I think it is. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think he got off the roller coaster. Otherwise, yeah. I'd really recognize him. Yeah. Um... I think uh, that's it. That's it? Yeah. Well, those are some interesting fun facts. Oh, well, oh. after Tucker hits the beehive with a chainsaw, he started running and moving his arms in a parody homage to the film Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, yeah I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. All right. So, we're doing, what's next week? Opera? Opera. Dario Argento. Yeah, with Prince. With Prince. Prince, head, a.k.a. Head Knight from <laughs> Nightlight? Nightlight. Nightlight. Did you just blank? Yeah, I totally <laughs> did. Yeah, it's been a long... It wasn't even a long day for me, but it feels like a long day. <laughs> yeah, you've been a fan of this podcast for a very long time, so it's pretty cool that he's coming on. Yeah, like, I've almost I've almost been with them from the start. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually really listening to one of their... Actually, I'm listening to the Allison episode, who we had on uh, oh, a while okay. back. Because she... Her first podcast episode she ever did was The Human Centipede. Right. And they were the only ones that I saw that did it. So I'm like, I'm going to listen to that. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to have him on. And I'm excited to see this movie. Yeah, me too. Like, this will be our f first introduction. This will be, I think, one of my first introductions into Italian horror, especially into Dario Argento. Yeah, I've been, we've been wanting to get into it for a while, so it's a nice little push. Yeah, I know. I've been trying to pick them up slowly, so then, like... When I have them, I can be like, binge time. Yeah. But I, I just stopped. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, do you want to plug us out? Sure do. Uh, our name is Our Life in Order. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and X. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube, where we do uh, short movie reviews, trailer reactions, or sorry, reviews. Uh, I do a physical media update. And then we also have a Patreon for a very, very low price. You can go there and listen to our after hours. 
where we discuss what's going on in our lives, and if we have guests, we talk about their lives. <laughs> we get pretty personal sometimes. Yeah, we try to. We try to get into the, like, like we want to know the gossip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we also do polls, uh, the occasional bonus episode, which we need to do. Yes, I know. And then um, we're on Discord as well, which if uh, you have to be a Patreon member in order to get involved in that. But everybody's having a good time. I know just everybody wished everybody a happy Easter on there. I wish everybody a happy Easter on there because I am horrible at responding. Yes, you are. Yes. <laughs> I love you guys, but I'm just busy. I also want to throw in that we have our watch party on Friday. Slumber Party Massacre too. Yes. So if you are interested in joining for the watch party, we had a great time last time. Uh, send us a message and I'll get you in on the Discord. And yeah. Yeah, we have like seven people. Yeah, and we're doing it at 8 p.m. EST this time, just an hour later. Okay, Yeah. and this is our first, be me and Sam's first time watch for this movie. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Happy Easter. Stay spooky.